Hi guys, it's uh, Jax here again. I'm going to do another uh, video review for my uh, EDC series. Um, a little departure from what I've uh, been doing lately with uh, flashlights. Um, but uh, So today I'm uh, reviewing a knife. Uh, the knife uh, today is the Spyderco Dragonfly 2. Uh, so this fits uh, nicely into the EDC, uh, EDC usage um, category. It's uh, a very small, tiny knife, and if you can see, um, here's my forefinger, and my forefinger is uh, about the same length, and if I put this in my hand, my hand swallows it right up. Um, so it's a tiny knife, it's lightweight, it's uh, short and uh, compact, and um, for some people this is ideal uh, for an everyday carry knife. Um, now a lot of people are sensitive to uh, they don't like having a knife that's over a certain amount of weight like uh, for instance four ounces and some people don't like uh, knives that are that they feel in their pocket now uh, this knife you won't feel in your pocket you could probably wear it um, with uh, you know summer shorts and stuff like that and forget all about it you uh, don't feel the weight uh, you barely feel the weight and uh, depending on what you're wearing and uh, it's easy to uh, to forget about like it's, you know it's kind of just uh, a nice painless thing to uh, wear compared to uh, if you had a heavier longer knife in your pocket so this thing carries really really well um, like I said it's almost uh, unnoticeable in your uh, day-to-day -day travels um, but uh, Spyderco calls this uh, the little big knife and uh, that uh, moniker applies to a lot of their knives but uh, what they mean by that is that it has a, a diminutive size yet it has big cutting power and uh, the reason for that is uh, you know blade uh, blade shape uh, blade uh, geometry um, and certain design elements that they uh, that they uh, put into their knives such as uh, choils and uh, jimping and uh, the attention to detail that they put into the uh, ergonomics of the uh, blade and handle. Um, so this is truly a little knife with uh, big cutting power. So um, now I'm going to go in and uh, briefly talk about Spyderco, the company itself. And uh, this is uh, pertinent to this review because um, uh, because this is a Spyderco and, um, and it uh, pertains to... To, to why this knife is so uh, uh, good. So, uh, Spyderco is, um, has been around for a long time and uh, they're one of those unique companies that uh, have uh, carved their own, uh, that left their own mark on the, uh, uh, in the cutlery world, uh, sport cutlery world. Um, they have uh, unique designs, innovative uh, designs, and uh, excellent build quality, good attention to detail, uh, and it's a good all-around uh, product. Uh, you can say that for most of their product line. Um, I only own one Spyderco, and that's this knife here. Um, but uh, there's been a lot of knives that I really wanted from them. They, uh, they have so many nice knives. Uh, Top-of-the-line components and uh, materials in the, in the craftsmanship and design. Uh, so... Yeah, so uh, one of the th one of the things that really uh, set uh, um, Spyderco apart is um, they use uh, premium uh, materials, and uh, in particular uh, their blade steel. Now, Spyderco deserves a uh, huge hats off for the dedicated work they have done to uh, educate themselves and uh, talk to the experts and. Um, you know, trial and error, and uh, and uh, to getting their uh, heat treatment right for their blades. Uh, a blade steel is uh, only as good as the heat treatment and the uh, you know that that process that it goes through. Uh, you know, you could have uh, the world's greatest blade steel, but if you uh, don't do the uh, heat treating and the tempering right, you gotta you got uh, a knife that could be outperformed by lesser steels. So. The heart and soul of a of a blade is really the heat treatment, and uh, many a knife expert and a blacksmith will tell you the same thing. 
So uh, that's one thing you can give uh, Spyderco credit for is they uh, they consult with experts, they do their own testing, they do their research and uh, trial and error, and they really uh, find what the good balance uh, for uh, heat treating and uh, hardening and uh, and tempering their steels. Uh, this this is really really important because it's the very uh, essence of uh, what makes the blade itself perform and uh, of course uh, it, as a whole package you can, I guess I'm singling one thing out but uh, you know it's like with a lot of things in life uh, if uh, if there's a, 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 a weak link in a chain then I guess the whole chains no good but so having said that the uh, that excellence also goes into uh, every component of the knife and they do their uh, best job to uh, to bring to the market something that's high quality in all aspects to uh, make a good rounded out package. So here we go we got the Spyderco Dragonfly 2 perfect everyday carry knife uh, for light duty I gotta add the light duty um, I'm not too sure how heavy duty uh, how much uh, <laughs> I'm not too sure what kind of heavy duty thing you could put this through it I might be more than uh, than I'm giving it credit for but this is more of a light duty you know uh, f you know cutting your food and uh, opening packages and cutting up cardboard boxes and cutting rope and uh, you know something good for uh, taking fishing and cutting your fishing line or uh, you know maybe whittling uh, marshmallow sticks and uh, who knows God God only knows that uh, you know gardening uh, trimming and pruning and um, you know that kind of stuff um, <laughs> uh, you know uh, that kind of stuff um, I, I say this for one reason and that's because the dragonfly 2 doesn't have any any um, any liners so what we're looking at here is um, we'll start with the handle the handle on this particular model, and uh, most Spyderco knives come in uh, a couple different, uh, each model seems to almost come in a different, uh, a different, um, they make several versions of each knife. Uh, for instance, the Dragonfly is available in, in lots of versions. There's a pure stainless steel handle. There's a carbon fiber handle, I think, or uh, I could be wrong about the carbon fiber, but definitely a G10 and uh, then we have FRN uh, so um, there is uh, multiple uh, um, models to each model for uh, most of their lineup so what we're looking at here today is uh, the FRN which is um, I believe that stands for fiberglass reinforced nylon or uh, something like that so it is uh, a plastic kind of uh, handle but uh, not a cheap crummy kind of plastic what it is is very very strong very uh, very strong material um, and uh, probably has a lot of benefits uh, maybe it's it's probably resistant to uh, you know a lot of things maybe maybe somewhat chemical resistant I'm just kind of uh, I don't know for sure but uh, usually uh, handle material that's uh, chosen has lots of benefits it's uh, you know some some it's rotten mildew resistant uh, you know compared to leather or wood um, you know uh, it might have so many other benefits um, you know it might be uh, dimensionally stable or uh, impervious to cold or heat or whatever it might be but uh, so I don't know a whole lot about FRN other than it should be a, a pretty strong sturdy uh, good wearing uh, material um, so if you notice the texturing on this knife, um, that's uh, Spyderco's, um, I think it's volcano or waffle texturing, I could be wrong, but it's uh, bi-directional or uh, multi-directional. It gives really good grip, um, and that's that's a plus because you don't want a slippery hand handle if you're... Uh, if your hands are wet or slippery or slimy or whatever from uh, whatever you're touching so a uh, nice uh, FRN handle now being that this is such a tiny lightweight knife um, it doesn't have stainless steel liners so uh, you know this knife can probably go through a whole lot before it would uh, give you problems but uh, it's not a, it's not intended to be a heavy-duty uh, service knife it's meant for uh, you know light to medium tasks 
Um, so uh, don't go uh, using this to baton wood or anything like that, which it might be able to handle it if you uh, took the knife out of its lock position and, and so you didn't put stress on the lock. But uh, So yeah, anyways, that's the FRN handle, which has a nice ergonomic shape. Uh, here's a choil. Now a choil is a place where you can choke up on the knife and it gives your, uh, it, it's a recessed area that allows your finger uh, secure purchase of the blade and uh, so that's the choil right um, right uh, here and it's jim it's got jimping on the blade which uh, jimping is is machined in grooves for grip also the jimping continues on the back of the the of the knife on the FRN slab handles and also on the uh, the the uh, back of the blade here so that's all there for grip so that's how you would grip the uh, Spyderco Dragonfly. Uh, as you can see, it uh, perfectly makes use of your whole hand. Perfect. This little uh, flat area here, uh, here's a nice curve for uh, ergonomic for those fingers. And uh, if you also want to hold it another way, this is sometimes called a pinky shelf. So your pinky would go there, but I got I to gotta admit this is a very comfortable knife. You got a very secure grip. Uh, the cutting power of this blade shape and the flat grind uh, combined with the good blade steel and the ergonomic handle and the way that the uh, the arch in here is uh, put in there and then the way the uh, geometry of the blade dips down here you got uh, insane cutting power so a uh, very very capable little knife um, this knife has a lot of a lot of respect in the knife world I would imagine so um, that's the uh, the the choil. A lot of knives have choils. It uh, helps you move your fingers up so you can do finer work and it also gives you nice secure grip. Otherwise you can also hold it down here. Another another com comfortable uh, uh, grip that uh, it gives you. I'm just sorry about the vibration. I'm moving my camera back here. Uh, okay so um, uh, another good thing about this knife is you can take it apart and put it back together again uh, so that means that uh, Spyderco went and uh, designed it with uh, Torx screws for the pivot and uh, all the other uh, uh, bolts and, and whatnot and that means you can take the knife apart and uh, clean the lint or service it or uh, what have you um, you know so that's a nice touch because some knives have riveted in uh, um, you know pivots and stuff like that and you can't access it so I'm gonna close this knife up here so uh, adjustable uh, adjustable pivot if you uh, take your little torque thing you could uh, adjust the uh, the centering of the uh, knife with with the pivot uh, with the pivot uh, uh, bolt there or, uh, also this knife has a um, I don't know if I mentioned this but uh, when you open these uh, lock back, this is a mid lock back design. I gotta add for a folding knife. A lock back is uh, so a lot of the times is up. It's back here, like on uh, uh, you know bucks and stuff like that from the olden days. But uh, this is a mid position lock back. So a lock back uh, simply means that there's a spring tensioned um, bar of steel here, and the, and it would be uh, wedged against a uh, block that is that's uh, pressing against another piece of spring steel and uh, and then a cutout on the blade tang that matches um, uh, that uh, bar of steel that also has a cutout so it's the lock mechanism for the knife and listen to the nice solid lock up with Spyderco knives with the lock back that's one of the first things I noticed with uh, when I first time I ever grabbed a Spyderco knife was that uh, bank vault sounding uh, secure feeling of the lockup. Retention's pretty good when you push that uh, lock back in. It's not going to close on your fingers. Even if it does, if your fingers are up here, the choil prevents the blade from slicing into your fingers. But uh, it's a knife, so be careful. So there's that lock back. Uh, the cutout here they say is uh, a David Boyne uh, detent. Uh, which means that it's a uh, cut out or uh, ground down so that um, uh, you don't accidentally um, engage the lock. Uh, you have to actually get in there with your finger and uh, purposefully engage the lock rather than when you're holding it, just uh, your folds of skin and stuff pushing down on it and stuff like that. 
So uh, David Boyne Dent, it's a lockback design. A lot of Spyderco knives feature uh, lockbacks. Uh, some feature compression locks and uh, liner locks, a couple frame locks, stuff like that. So uh, pretty good solid lock up there. I have uh, zero blade play in this knife, which means no side to side or up and down wiggling, which would uh, which would mean um, uh, the tolerance or the clearances have been uh, you know weakened or uh, designed. Uh, not properly so they're kind of not uh, in perfect alignment now a great thing about Spyderco knives at least in my uh, estimation is the wire clip uh, a lot of wire clips oh well, I mean some wire clips might be really flimsy and uh, and thin gauge uh, wire so it just seems like a flimsy piece of garbage or whatever this one is a solid piece of work here man I tell you this is a solid piece of work uh, nice nice deep pocket carry you know almost uh, you know uh, three-quarter deep pocket carry if it was a really really super deep pocket carry the clip would uh, be up there but um, but uh, pretty deep nice secure grip uh, good uh, good clip it's also reversible as you can see it's uh, two position reversible and uh, it's always carried tip up so that means that uh, you know it's a tip up carry here's the tip of the blade pointing up to where the clip is attached if the clip was down here it would be a tip down carry so tip ups good a lot of people like tip up because when you draw it from your pocket it, if you were to draw this from your pocket it's immediately ready to go to open if it uh, w if it was the other way around and the clip was this way and it was a tip down carry I think you would draw it and then you'd have to flip the knife over and then open it so it's a faster draw method I believe could be wrong there so anyways it's two position not four position so on this side you can have it left or right so it's ambidextrous for uh, lefties uh, so you would just simply undo the torque screw pull the clip out um, put it undo this screw stick it in there and, and tighten it back down now as you can see from the cutout here there's a lanyard hole in the back that's a nice little touch uh, by Spyderco now let's talk about the heart of this knife the blade so Spyderco uh, likes to call this a leaf shaped blade and that's got a bit of bit of junk on it Anyway, Spyderco blades look really nice. They have a satin finish, not a high polish, uh, at least not, a, not uh, maybe some models do, but this one, uh, most of them don't. They have a satin finish. It looks really good, really classy, elegant. Uh, there's the trademark round cutout Spyderco hole, and that's, of course, uh, their uh, trademark, but it's also there because that's the opening device. No thumb studs, you notice. It's That is the thumb stud, so... It's uh, easy to open that way, no problems. If you loosen this pivot bolt, you can flick it open and uh, with surprising speed, um, you know. Um, so what we're looking at here is a small, tiny blade um, of VG10 blade steel. VG10 is good stuff. It's a premium steel. It's uh, Spyderco's uh, standard um, steel. Uh, lots of their knives use that as their standard steel it is a Japanese steel and uh, you can only uh, get it in Japan uh, as far as I understand it Japan doesn't export it it's kind of their own little uh, personal treasure VG stands for uh, I think it's um, something gold very good or gold steel it's a it's a premium steel and it's a very excellent blade steel um, it is a premium steel I think it was designed for the uh, food industry and uh, it was designed for cutlery you know not all steels are uh, purpose built for cutlery they're just uh, adopted into the cutlery world this particular one I do believe was uh, created specifically for the cutlery uh, industry and I also think I heard something about it was also uh, created for um, for uh, horticulture you know like gardening and stuff like that so it was intended to be a blade steel a cutter steel so what we have here is a high carbon uh, full stainless steel blade now high carbon is important because carbon is one of the elements that make up the uh, composition of steel that uh, allow it to harden when you uh, heat treat it now uh, heat treating is by heating uh, a soft uh, uh, 
unhardened steel up you heat it up till it's uh, red hot or whatever the uh, critical temperature of that particular steel is and then you would quench it either by uh, dipping it in oil or uh, water or air quenching or uh, salt bath quenching what this does is it uh, transforms um, the crystal uh, microstructure in steel and um, uh, brings out the carb uh, you know it uh, keep it uh, transforms the structure of steel. Steel goes through all sorts of uh, changes when you heat it and cool it and it uh, is different in each stage. It's uh, really neat if you look into it. This is a martensitic steel which means it's a fully hardenable steel and it's in its hardened state right now. After they, uh, after they quench it which uh, hardens the blade because uh, you need a blade to have a hardness if you want it to uh, be able to maintain an edge otherwise the edge will just uh, wear away or fold or roll on you and uh, so after it comes out of the uh, heat treatment the blade is uh, hard and uh, brittle so hard equals strong and uh, so uh, strong strength and hardness are uh, so synonymous with one another and uh, sometimes you get uh, brittleness with hardness you know like a diamond is the hardest hardest natural thing but uh, it can be it can be brittle but it's incredibly hard you might wonder how that's possible but uh, it's true it's like uh, you know whatever but uh, that's the true case and anyways after that it has to be uh, sorry I'm um, uh, it has to be uh, tempered and tempering means uh, heating the blade far less usually far less than the uh, quenching temperature and that draws the uh, hardness down to uh, less brittle uh, um, hardness levels and uh, to, tr to try to find a good balance for uh, uh, what a good hardness uh, is for the particular working knife because uh, too hard and the blade could uh, chip um, it could chip um, you know and crack and stuff like that because it's so bloody hard but uh, so you know bladesmithing and uh, cutlery is about finding striking the perfect balance for the per uh, particular steel for you layman's out there not all steels the same it's not just a hunk of metal it has different compositions uh, it's uh, not every steel is a hard steel I mean some steel you pick up and you feel and it's like feels damn hard but it's truly a, a mild steel and then there's harder steels so before I go rambling on too much this is a um, high carbon uh, stainless steel stainless steel means that it, uh, it, it, it resists rust far easier and uh, far better for far longer than just a plain carbon steel and that's because uh, it has over 14 percent chromium in its uh, composition chromium is an element uh, that allows the uh, Blades, it helps the blade steel harden. It forms carbides, which are ultra hard um, uh, things inside the the blade steel itself to retain, uh, gives it its hardness. Uh, but it also has the benefit of making a blade stainless. This is a good stainless steel. Um, it'll probably take a lot to make VG10 rust. Um, but every stainless steel I believe can rust eventually it's just it'll take far far longer so uh, this is a relatively um, uh, you just uh, it's relatively um, maintenance free maybe wipe it down and clean it off every once in a while and uh, stuff like that so it's not like carbon steel where you have to oil it or force a patina on it um, so high carbon uh, steel with uh, a stainless steel it also has um, other ingredients in it it is a cobalt steel I believe it does have a little bit of cobalt which is kind of uh, different than a lot of other steels it's kind of uh, rare it also has van uh, vanadium or vanadium which is ultra important for uh, it, it it's one of the hardest uh, carbide forming uh, elements that you can put in um, uh, steel and it also refines the grain structure which is all important to the performance of the blade if the uh, grain structure is uh, really uh, fine and uh, and uh, homogeneous or whatever it uh, makes the knife perform better so uh, I think there's molybdenum or molybdenum in there um, and a couple other elements but uh, long story short it's a premium high quality blade steel that will take a wicked edge not all steels um, well some steels seem to take a edge better and that means a finer cutting point so uh, VG10 is known for taking a savage 
savagely wicked edge, which means uh, hair splitting sharp. And uh, has has um, the ability to hold that edge for a uh, respectable amount of time. Therefore, an excellent blade steel. Uh, now, what you're looking at here is a flat grind. Here is a full flat ground blade, which uh, is excellent for cutting performance. And what I mean by flat uh, grind is, uh, as you can see, there's an obvious example. But um, sometimes not so obvious. But um, a flat grind simply means that uh, the bevels on the knife or the, uh, the grinding on the knife is uh, perfectly flat. So a completely full flat ground. Uh, some blades are um, hollow ground. Uh, so uh, that means that only uh, you know whatever portion of the blade is um, is radius ground, you know, with a uh, grinding wheel. So it's concave. Uh, so that's a hollow grind. Some are just uh, flat ground in the middle, like a Scandi grind or a saber grind. And uh, there's a bunch of different grinds. This is a full flat uh, ground blade. Um, so, you know what guys, I'm getting up to uh, 25 minutes, so I'm going to have to stop it uh, before this gets up to 2 gigabytes for YouTube. So, uh, if you feel uh, curious and want to hear about a little bit more, um, join me in part 2 of the Spyderco Dragonfly 2. Thanks a lot. Bye.